Hi, I'm Anna Bondar and you're listening to Functional Tennis Podcast. Welcome to the YouTube episode of the Functional Tennis Podcast. I'm Fabio Molly, your host, and this week I speak to top 70 WTA Hungarian tennis player Anna Bondar. Anna tells us all about her journey to top 100 where she broke through last year and how much that meant her after six years from when she turned junior to senior. And it's a great story. It was really emotional for her to break through. And now she's top 70. She tells us about her goals moving forward and how she wants to break the top 50. It's a great chat. Anna's a lovely girl. And I hope you're going to enjoy it. Before we get started, a shout out to our podcast sponsor, Slinger, who make the awesome portable ball machine. Bring it onto the court. Have your balls in there your racket it all fits in there and so you've no excuses not to play even if you can't find an opponent or partner so check it out at slingerbag.com and finally last week we launched the functional tennis saber our new sweet spot training tool it's available on pre-order now head over to functionaltennis.com to check it out it's feedback has been amazing uh, you're going to love it and even just check it out see it and let me know your thoughts but other than that let's jump into this episode with anna hope you enjoy it bye hi anna welcome to the functional tennis podcast how are you hi thank you very much for joining me um very good thank you i just arrived home from practice (laughs) great and you were just in madrid yeah i just arrived home a couple days ago uh i do it was my first time in madrid i enjoyed it a lot I uh, passed through qualifying there and I lost in a close match against Kasakina in the first round. But it was a great first, first experience there. Great. I've, I've seen a few of your results and I think we posted your video. Maybe about a year ago, uh, we posted one of your videos. But your results, you've had a lot of firsts over the past couple of years uh, between Grand Slams, between a lot of very close matches and new experience. So really excited to find out about that but maybe we can start by telling our listeners a bit about you and where in Hungary you're from and when you started playing tennis. Yes I'm from Hungary Uh, I currently live in Budapest I'm not from this city Uh, I started playing when I was four uh, in a small town and my dad was my first coach so he was coaching me from the age of four to 16 and uh, my mom was actually my fitness coach so I'm kind of from a sporty family and I have a sister, she also played tennis, uh, so we were practicing all the time together. Uh, but she decided to go to the U.S. to play college tennis, and then I decided to, to go for the pro tournament. So when she moved to the U.S., that's when I moved from home, so I moved to Budapest because I had no one there to practice anymore. Uh, then since then I'm training and I'm based here in Budapest. Um, yeah, uh, I've played a lot of junior tournaments, so it's been a long road to get here. I've, my best ranking when I was junior it was 15, so I was I was pretty good, but I wasn't among the best. Um, and then yeah, it took me a couple of years till I made it to the uh, pros and to the top hundred. And tell me, your sister, was she older than you or younger? Uh, yes, she's older than me, one and a half years. And where did she go in the States? Uh, she went to South Carolina and she likes US so much, like she's basically living there now. So she moved to Miami and she's she's there, yeah. And is she still in tennis? Yes, so she finished, finished the university and she's kind of uh, giving lessons now and also trying to find uh, like a job, watch what she finished with the university she so she finished with finance and business Uh, but yeah basically she's giving lessons now so she's into tennis still (laughs) oh oh, that's great and you so she's a year and a half older than you and you guys moved to well you moved to budapest how old were you when you moved to budapest i was 17 yeah yeah did you go to it was there a national training center in budapest uh, no, so first I went to a private club um, where we found a coach and there I was for one and a half years. And then after I moved to the National Tennis Center where I've been training since then. Um, yeah, so I moved to this center in 2015 and I had a coach for four years. And now my current coach, I've been working with him for two years, mostly two years now. Okay, and so going back to Budapest, we... How old were you when you started, made the transition from junior? So you said you were top 15 junior and you went to seniors. Yeah, so I, I started 
I didn't play uh, in my last junior year any junior tournaments, so I started with the uh, 10Ks futures, uh, and I only played the European uh, Championship. Uh, juniors under 18 which I actually just won I didn't even plan to play it oh, wow. so it was uh, like I got to know two weeks before the tournament that I'm gonna go <laughs> so it was a nice ending actually for my junior car career but I was uh, already more focused than a futures tournament uh, yeah I kind of had some success in the 10, 10Ks and I just got injured one year later in 2016, uh, which took me uh, more than a year to get back from it. So it's been a long one. Uh, I was playing a tournament uh, in Hungary and I tore my ACL during a match. Uh, it wasn't completely broken, so it was only partially uh, broken. Then I went to see the doctor and uh, did all the MRI and what we needed. And then he wasn't sure if it was really bad or if it was if I can go uh, through it with only rehab, if I make my um, quadriceps like really strong. So uh, obviously I was trying to avoid the surgery. So it took me three, four months uh, till I felt okay. And I was saying that I'm ready to go back to play some tournaments. And I went to a 10K to Croatia, which I was where I was feeling good in the first two matches. But on the third match, I had a bad movement and uh, the same motion happened when when I got injured. So I said, no, I cannot do, the, do it like this anymore. So I went back home and decided to have the surgery in um, November 2016. And it took me nine months till I was um, playing my first tournament after. So it's been a very long one, but uh, since then I'm fortunate that I'm um, not having any injuries, I can say, and I hope it's going to stay like this. So it's been a tough period, but I, I'm pretty sure it made me stronger and it had a reason why it, I, it needed to happen like that. So um, I'm just taking the positives, if I can say this. And did you ever have any doubts during those nine months? Well, when let's say when the injury reoccurred in Croatia, after that, were you like, was there doubts in there to stop playing tennis or were you just always focused? Um, I didn't want to stop. Like, I always wanted to keep going. Of course, I had some doubts because I, I didn't know this injury before. Like, I had no one around me that had it and I didn't know what it takes. And uh, yeah, if, if it was going to be the same. Uh, but since then, actually, I know a few players who, who had the same. Uh, so yeah, I had some doubts in the beginning, but uh, the people were really supportive around me and they were just keeping me like um, keeping me positive and uh, telling me that I will come back, I will be stronger. And yeah, actually, I, I believe this had to, had to happen for some reason. And do you think having an injury early in your career made you appreciate your body a lot more and do a lot more of the prehab stuff in other areas of your body? Yeah, since then we've been focusing on uh, rehab and prehab uh, a lot. Like um, we are yeah, trying a lot of mobilization and stuff that like tennis is like a one-sided sport, which is not... Yeah very the very best for the body so we are uh, yeah we are focusing on the, keeping the balance and what do, what's your team look like today do you have a coach fitness trainer do you work with a psychologist nutritionist uh, yeah, I have a tennis coach uh, who I've been working uh, nearly two years now. I've been working with my fitness coach for more than six years now, so he's been with me all the way from from my before my injury during my injury and after my injury uh yeah i have a, a psychologist a psychologist um uh, i started working with her not long ago not very long ago like i can uh, a bit more than a year uh yeah so um we have um at the national tennis center we have um physio and that i can i can, she can help her have me anytime so yeah i have a small team <laughs> yes and that's really important but so you let's say you went pro when you were 17 and how, how old are you now 25 uh, turning 25 soon yes <laughs> okay soon 25 so let's say it how, did it take you six years to break top 100 roughly yeah nearly six years and yeah i had this long injury included but yeah i think 
yeah, for some players it's going much faster, some players it's going slower. And yeah, I think I needed this time to get mature enough. And obviously I would want it to reach and go like this if I could, but it wasn't meant to be for me, I guess. But uh, I've been very working very hard for years. And now that I'm seeing the results, it's just even sweeter. <laughs> and what for you, from let's say being around, you're in the 300s, let's say that bracket for quite a long time. I did see your, your futures, your ITFs. You got to, I think, roughly over 20 finals there. Uh, there's yeah. quite a lot of final singles from what I saw. Uh, what was this? What's your secret, or what's your what's made the difference from getting from being three hundreds to top hundred? Yeah, so I've been on the ITF tour for a really very long time, and I was I was trying really hard to uh, make the uh, breakthrough. And yeah, I think uh, my secret was that I was always. Uh, believing in myself that I can I can make it I had people around me who, who were telling me already like years ago that my level belongs there but I think I kind of realized when I just proved it to myself on bigger tournaments and I beat um, some top 100 players so that's when I kind of really believed that I can I can make it and um, I think I'm an I'm a hard worker um and yeah so i can resist for a long time uh yeah i've i i managed with the injuries i didn't have injuries so yeah i was just doing working and then yes finally i could i could break it and was there one magic moment you can relate to when it just clicked in your head and you went this is it like it's like you you reached like a computer game you reach the next level you unlock something was there is there one moment that you remember clearly um i couldn't say one match but yeah i started last year uh, so i started 2021 i was ranked uh, 275 and i finished the year as 90 so that was the the biggest jump of my career um during one year and especially the second half of last year went uh, pretty good um yeah i started to play like bigger tournaments like 125s and 250s in the second half or during the summer and yeah i i just remember when i had this first good results and yeah like people will were uh, telling me around me that there you go you can make it and, and you are very close it's and i also felt it during the matches it's just like little uh, differences so yeah, I, I I kind of got the confidence, and uh, it went pretty good afterwards. Like I I won a eighty k in Germany, and uh, played final in the next week also in an eighty k. Uh, so my ranking was improving. So I was uh, I was able to play bigger tournaments as well. Um, I played a quarter final on a, a two fifty event, and then. Uh, I think I was ranked around 130 when I went for the last push of the season to South America with the goal of making it to the Australian Open main draw, like my first main draw on a, on a Grand Slam. And I remember uh, I was counting the points, like how many points do I need to, to reach the ranking. And I, I knew I have uh, three tournaments there for sure. And I was still uh, thinking about the fourth one. If I need it, I will play it. So I went to the first tournament in Buenos Aires, Argentina, 125, and I, I actually won it. So and that was a big jump and it was very close to my goal already. Uh, so I, I think I jumped to 100, uh, 108 and um, that was my first WC title. Of course, it's 125, so not a 250. And I played the final exactly on the day like five years later that I had my surgery oh, wow. so I just realized this actually on the day of the final and the, um, uh, pra the ceremony so I was very emotional and uh, I, yeah, I felt very I don't know happy and emotional at the same time so uh, it was very special and uh, it's Still gives me goosebumps if I think about it, of, or if I rewatch the match point. That I, I it, it took a 
like so many years to get here but finally I made it and then the next week I went to play a 60k uh, in Chile uh, which I, of course I had the confidence I was I was in a flow and I really wanted to make it and um, uh, I won that tournament so two tournaments in a row <laughs> and before the final I was ranked on the live ranking I was already 102 or like 104 and I knew before the final if I win this match I'm gonna be top 100 <laughs> so I was telling to myself don't think about it it's just the same match it's just a final uh, like don't think about what it what it's gonna be if I win it or if I lose it of course I couldn't uh, I couldn't think of anything else than this so I was pretty tight during the match but I could uh, want it in two sets so I was just very relieved after and like happy and like I felt that the pressure was gone so and that was also a very special moment like that I was working since I was dreaming about this when I was a as, when I was a kid and it just came true and yeah it was it was so special that I I could uh, do this in like two tournaments i went to south america and i won two two of this congratulations <laughs> I, I, I can only imagine the the emotions you're going through and the stress and the pressure because yeah. top 100 is such a milestone for so many players yeah. and i've had some friends who've got stuck just outside of the top 100 and you know it's i wouldn't say it's regret but it was unfortunate they could never break the top 100 so i think for you to to get get through that must have been amazing and even this year, you've continued to improve. Like you're in the sixties now. So, what what have you changed anything once you once you went top hundred? You've just kept everything the exact same. Yeah. So I yeah I started this year uh, pretty good as well. Uh, already the first tournament in Australia went pretty good. I was I qualified on a two fifty and I got my first top fifty win against Tiniakova in the first round and then lost against Potapova in a crazy three setter. So it kind of uh, gave me the sign and the confidence that I have the level to play uh, these players. And yeah, I was just, I, I just kept going. I played my game. I, I had more and more confidence. And then, yeah, of course, I had tough moments as well when I was playing the 1,000 tournaments and I lost in qualifying first rounds. Uh, but I, I told myself it's... it's uh, I, I can only learn from this and get the experience. Of course, I just made it to the top 100. I need some more time to get used to this. Uh, but now that I'm playing uh, all these tournaments, I'm, I'm just getting used to this level. Like, nothing, nothing is easy. You don't get free points. You don't get so many chances during a match. So, yeah, I think that that's the key that, that I'm, um, I've been winning matches lately. So that I'm, I'm focused on, focusing on taking the chances whenever I have one. Great. Yeah, I have seen some of the draws. You've had some tough draws there, tough first-round draws where you get some highly ranked opponents, but that's what it's going to be now, isn't it, moving forward where there's no easy... Not that there was easy matches, but now they're even harder. But what's your what's your goal, so, to end at 2022? Yeah, so this uh, top 100 was a big milestone, but if I already made it, I was thinking um, I don't want to stop here. Uh, like, I'm happy that I made it, but I still feel I have some things to pr improve and that I can reach further. So for the next years, for sure, I want to stay like stable in the top 100, but I want to reach the top 50 by the end of this year. Uh, I know it's going to be tough because I will have a lot of points to defend the second uh, half of next year, but I don't feel it's impossible, so I'm ready to fight. <laughs> great, great. And to what advice, actually, do you have for other players out there who, you know, are on that tough journey? They started to play Futures now, and they could have six, seven, eight years of Futures challengers ahead of them. What advice do you have for them? Oh, yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, I mean, I believe that everyone has a unique and different journey. So uh, I cannot say that if it worked for me, it's going to work for them. But for sure, uh, they have to keep working hard and believe in themselves. Uh, and yeah, as I said, no one's career is, is the same path. So uh, there are going to be ups and downs, but you have to keep going and yeah, just believe in yourself. Great. And all, from all the tournaments you've played, and especially over the past 18 months, which have been 
Well, what has been your favorite venue so far? Oh, it's a tough one. Uh, so yeah, th this year was um, many of the like the first that I played so many tourna tournaments that I have never been before. Uh, it's tough to just pick one because uh, well, maybe sorry, maybe a better question is which one are you looking forward to going back to next year? Oh, uh, India was definitely. I liked it so much. Um, I I have good memories from Madrid, and I liked the atmosphere, and I think the court and like yeah, the environment was working well for me. Uh, I'm looking very forward for my first French Open because I only played it as a junior. I was uh, first out from qualifying in 2019, so it was a tough one. I was there, I was sitting, I was waiting if someone's gonna pull out, but it didn't happen. So I'm very looking forward to this one. And yeah, I love Australia, so I'm always happy to go back there. So it's tough to ch just pick one or two. <laughs> and, and tell me, who's your GOAT? Uh, it's the big debate. Who's your favorite tennis player of all the Roger time? <laughs> so I didn't hear that. Roger Federer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And have you met him? Yes. Yeah. I didn't speak to him because I was too shy, but uh, yeah, he's the goat for me. <laughs> Great. That, that's good. And tell me, for those who are listening, uh, we're on video here and will, this will be on YouTube also. Uh, there's some trophies and behind you and a load of the credentials. Which one means the most to you there? Oh, uh, I mean, for sure, the Grand Slams are favorite ones. But maybe the Buenos Aires one, which was my first WTA title. And I think I, yes, I have the trophy here. Show us. This, one is, this one is special. Uh, actually, I was getting a, a trophy with the mate, you know, the Argentinian thing. But I t couldn't take it home, which they always drink this tea thing. Oh, the mate. Yeah, yeah. The mate. So I got that one, but I couldn't take it home. So I just got this plate, this one. Okay. But and they wouldn't let you, you it's no. you leave it in oh no I, ha I had it for an hour but I had to give it back <laughs> I was hoping to get like at least a small of that one but I didn't <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's going to be many more many more you're going to need a bigger trophy cabinet <laughs> but yeah. and so the plan is I leave, we leave with this just French Open coming up soon are you playing qualies in Rome uh, I'm not actually going to Rome I'm going to uh, play 125 in Karlsruhe in Germany and then uh, depending how I do there if I play one more tournament before the French Open the 250 in Rabat Mar uh, Morocco or I just practice a few days and I go straight to uh, to French Open so get the confidence high win matches and crush it yes that's the goal I've been to Karlsruhe last year actually and I I did it I did pretty good there so I hope I, it was gonna something similar <laughs> And is that a big difference when you go back to a tournament uh, where you've been there before, you've done well, you may have won it, and you just feel at ease at it and your game is just better? Uh, yeah, I like to go back to places where I, I did good. Um, so, yeah, I, I know this club actually because I've been playing in the German Bundesliga there I uh, that was my team for years so they were very welcoming there and I'm always looking forward to go back to places where I have nice memories from and will you st are you still playing a bit of German Bundesliga yeah actually I'm going yeah uh, to play a few matches when I have time between the tournaments but of course the tournaments are the priorities and what team are you, are you still playing for the same team or a new team? No, I have a new team for this year. Who is it? Uh, Aken. Okay, I don't. I don't yeah, it's okay. close to the Belgian border. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, well, look, Anna, thank you very much. I wish you all the best of luck in breaking the top 50 this year. And yeah, appreciate you jumping on here and hope the rest of your training back home goes well. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.